You may not know who Melanie Martinez is, but you've been seeing her name pop across current events for about a week now. I have 12 things that you need to know about Melanie Martinez coming right up. I always loved writing about things that, you know, maybe people find a little bit more uncomfortable to talk about. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Azalea Hart. Now at the beginning of this year, a lot of people knew that I posted a lot of videos to do with Melanie Martinez. But now that it comes to the end of 2017, I thought I'd do a bit of a recap for the people who don't really know her. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and turn on your bell notifications. That way you never miss when I upload a new episode. My name is Melanie Martinez. I've been writing music since I was 14. All right, so let's get right on into the list, starting with what you've been hearing on the news lately. Timothy Heller and Melanie Martinez are the two names that you've been seeing simultaneously in the news. If you're a fan of Melanie Martinez or Timothy Heller, I urge you to do a little bit of your own research and then decide what you believe. Timothy Heller and Melanie Martinez were best friends at one point in time. Apparently Melanie ended the friendship because she felt that their friendship was a distraction and that she felt it was crucial for her to really focus on her career. So she ended the friendship via text message. Yikes. It has come to light that Timothy has accused Melanie of some very, very serious accusations that took place in 2015. There's been quite a bit of back and forth on Twitter between the two singers, but nothing from authorities just yet. Now, Timothy has said that she didn't want to come forward at all because she knows how dedicated Melanie's fans are to her. But a lot of those fans are turning their back right now. Are you guys up to speed with what's been going on? Comment down below and let me know. So if you don't know who Melanie Martinez is and you're still a little bit lost, well, she first appeared on The Voice in 2012. Baby, can you see I'm calling a guy like you, she warning. She auditioned by singing Toxic by Britney Spears and made it through and was on Team Adam. She was eliminated in week five. I never expected to get this far and this is beyond, you know, what I've ever dreamed and I'm just so happy I got to express who I am as an artist and really touch people's hearts because that was the ultimate goal. Her first album was entitled Cry Baby, which was a nickname she had as a child, mostly because she felt she was very in tune with her emotions. She would write songs and poetry to get her feelings out. She feels that being emotional is also a strength. I started writing poetry at a young age and have been singing all my life. Not only is Melanie a singer and songwriter, but her music videos are all of her very own concepts and ideas. Check out her videos and take a closer look into her creative side. My friends don't walk there. Melanie is very open about her vices on Instagram. She said in an interview with Vogue that she has anxiety before and after performing and that she needs to smoke to chill out. Not cigarettes though. Ever wonder where Melanie got her hair inspiration from? It's definitely from 101 Dalmatians villain Cruella DeVille. She switches between dyeing her hair and wearing different wigs to get the look she wants. One side always remains black though while the other side is constantly changing. Melanie has a very unique sense of fashion. It's a mix between a baby, a doll, and a Japanese street style called Lolita. It's all about Victorian and Elizabethan silhouettes with a little girly edge. Plus, lots of bows, frills, and layers. When Melanie was just a child, her parents bought her a new puppy. But they said you need to choose between your bunny rabbit and your puppy. Which one do you choose? When she chose the puppy, she gave her bunny to her friend who also had a bunny. She thought this would be a good fit because one, she could visit it, and two, it would have a friend. One day, they left the rabbits in the backyard unattended for four hours or so. They found the first bunny in the neighbor's backyard and Melanie's bunny's head in their yard. And no one knows how it happened. They ended up finding their bunny in their neighbor's backyard and my bunny's head was in their yard. So this is for my bunny. My first pet. As of 2016, Melanie's tattoo count is at 36. They include her decapitated bunny that I just mentioned, Madeline, a milk carton, a strawberry with the word strawberry boy, a naked couple in a game on one thigh, and a clothed couple in a maze on her other thigh, a red wagon, an ice cream truck, and many, many more. They hurt really bad, so I feel like I earned it. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie doesn't like vegetables, but she loves chocolate. She performs with her shoes off, and she daydreams about communicating with aliens so that they can pick her up and take her with them. It was long awaited, 
but Melanie released a finale in her self-written, directed, styled videos from her Crybaby album, and it was quite an accomplishment for her. Alright guys, so that's it for this episode, 12 things that you need to know about Melanie Martinez if you didn't know who she was before. So I know that you guys have been seeing a lot in the news, but what is your take on it? What do you believe? Comment down below and let me know. If you want to see more episodes on Melanie Martinez, you can click right on over here. And you can subscribe right here. And I'll see you guys next time.